There's been a lot of tongue wagging about drugs containing semaglutide, like Wagovi and Ozempic, and their massive success in the realm of weight loss. But there are hints of their utility in other areas too. And that's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. In mid to late 2023, there were a flurry of news reports about patients taking new weight loss drugs reporting associated mental health concerns, including suicidal thoughts. Shortly thereafter, a team of researchers tackled questions about the relationship between these drugs and poor mental health, conducting a retrospective cohort study of over 240,000 individuals who were either overweight or obese. Some patients were taking GLP-1 agonists like Wagovi and Ozempic, while others were receiving non-GLP-1 agonist weight loss medications. According to data obtained from their electronic health records, the incidence and recurrence of suicidal ideation was lower in the individuals taking the semaglutide medications than those taking something else. This was true across sex, age, and ethnicity. So this is great news, and researchers are now wondering if these medications can have a positive effect on mental health. This is mainly due to the type of receptors they interact with, which are highly expressed in areas of the brain strongly involved in emotional behavior. We already know that the antidepressant bupropion is effective at weight reduction, and initial evidence suggests that weight loss medications acting on the GLP-1 receptor are associated with changes in the brain that have implications for depressive behaviors. Quick note before moving on. Any data on the relationship between these medications and positive mental health effects is in very early stages, so it's not yet possible to take a firm stance on whether this relationship is real or reliable. For example, liraglutide, which acts on the same receptor as semaglutide, eases depressive and anxiety-like behaviors in a mouse model of depression. I'm always hammering on the point that animal studies can only go so far in telling us how things will work in humans, and this is no exception. Studies in humans do suggest that liraglutide is associated with improvements in cognitive function, alongside notable changes in volume of particular brain structures, but we don't have anything definitive yet. We did find some data published by Epic Research, which appears to publish clinical findings using internal peer review. We aren't sure what the details are of that, so we present the following with the whole grain of salt warning. These data were obtained from over 230 million patient records from various hospitals and clinics in the U.S. and Lebanon. The researchers conducting the study, a mix of medical and academic professionals, examined diabetic and non-diabetic patients prescribed GLP-1 medications, looking at diagnoses of anxiety and depression following medication onset. For diabetic patients taking GLP-1 medications, except liraglutide, interestingly, which did not seem to have an effect, a depression diagnosis was less likely compared to diabetic patients not taking a similar medication. The same was true for non-diabetic patients. As for anxiety, diabetic patients on any GLP-1 medication were less likely to receive a diagnosis of anxiety following medication onset compared to diabetic patients not on a similar medication. For non-diabetic patients, this was only true for individuals prescribed semaglutide. Again, liraglutide did not have a significant effect. These data are interesting, but they raise a lot of questions. Also, the methods we were able to access didn't tell us enough to make us feel confident about the results. Doesn't look like they collected data about what people's anxiety and depression levels were before starting the medication, or whether any participants had previously or were currently being treated for anxiety and or depression. And finally, they report the odds ratio to represent the relationship between each drug and the incidence of anxiety and depression, and odds ratios tend to exaggerate the association between an exposure to something, i.e. a drug, and the outcome, i.e. a diagnosis of depression. Calculating an actual percentage from the raw data will be more telling, but if they did that, they did not present the results. So basically, we don't know the answer to the question of whether certain weight loss drugs could also be helpful in the realm of mental health. There are hints here and there in the literature, but only enough to say that it's worth studying. Definitely not enough to say that there's a real relationship here yet. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy this previous episode on new weight loss medications are the real deal. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel down below. Maybe go to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, help support the show so we can make it bigger and better. We'd like to especially thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Edward Lillaholm, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.